Hi, I'm Dean Rod Vera. In this video, I will answer some questions given by my subscribers and my viewers. The Q&A begins now. Welcome back. If you are new to this channel, please like and share this video. And if you can, you'll do me a great favor by subscribing to my channel. It's free and it'll give you good luck. All right. The first question. Well, actually, two questions uh, by a viewer and a subscriber, and his name is Juan Carlo Saliba. He asks, Dean, how about handwritten notes? Do you still encourage them? And his second question is. The Pomodoro Technique while studying. All right. When making notes during class or class lectures, uh, I would do encourage handwritten notes, uh, but make sure that your notes are neat and clear and concise so that when you read them at the end of the semester or before reviewing for mid and midterms or finals, you'll be able to understand them. As far as the Pomodoro Technique, um, I did some research about it. And it's using 25-minute timers for an all-inclusive studying uh, period. Not that I want to encourage the Pomodoro Technique, but I would think that when you study, you should study at your own pace and study a system that you feel comfortable with. I would not encourage anything new or a new technique to study, especially in law school. You should be comfortable in the way you should study. Yes, you will study longer, but you should use the technique that you are used to, familiar with, and are comfortable with. We have another view here who asks two questions from Yusuf Magindara. I hope I pronounced that properly. First question, is it allowed or accepted that digest cases will be written in the semi-block format? And the second question is, uh, is it allowed to include the facts written in bullet form? Now, some professors ask that digests uh, be submitted at the end of the semester or maybe at the end of a subject matter. Um, if the format will of course be dependent on the professor but if you are given the free hand to write those digests or type those digests i would suggest to the block format but the headings would be centered so like the facts would be centered the, the issues the the reasoning in your name i would uh, i would encourage that how about facts written in bullet form if the cases will be submitted to the professor at the end of semester i would not encourage that the facts be written in bullet form you may ask the professor beforehand, maybe he would accept that format. Uh, the only way I think you should write it in bullet form is it, if the digits are for your internal or for a review or for personal use. I would only use the bullet form for facts if the cases are for your personal review. Okay, we now have uh, several questions from a subscriber, Ezekiel Albert Tulio, and he asks these five questions. Question number one, is it really okay to take law immediately as soon as I graduate? Yes. If you were to decide to take law school right after you graduate from college, I would uh, recommend that. But make sure that you start to apply for these law schools within their prescribed application period. Sometimes, uh, for example, if you graduate in May or in um, March, some law schools have their application period closed out in December or October the previous year. So make sure you follow or take note of the application period of the law schools uh, that you want to apply to. Next question. If you were to suggest a good law school in Davao City for aspiring law students who are not that smart, what would it be and why? Um, you can have smart lawyers, but I think uh, going to law school will make anybody uh, just as uh, smart enough to be a lawyer. Now, for, for Davao City, and you're asking me because I'm particular to the Jesuit system, I would recommend Ateneo de Davao. First, they, uh, they do have uh, bar top notchers in fact in 2017 they landed third place and for the bar examination of 2019 they scored the highest passing average at 88.64 percent that's pretty high third question what are the subjects that i could possibly encounter as a first year law student well there are three major subjects at the first semester in your first year that is constitutional law one criminal law one and persons and family law those are the three major subjects that you should concentrate on uh, and you should do well because they would comprise a major uh, component of your grade. F fourth question, how to properly answer the recitations? Well, I do have a video, uh, there's a link up here, on how to do 
presentations for law students. But my for this uh, question and answer, I would say that um, you should answer directly, straight to the point, look straight at the professor, and answer directly. Fifth question from Ezekiel. If there's something that our professors would require us to memorize as a first-year law student, what would it be? Well, for, uh, for constitutional law, I would recommend that you memorize the preamble and, of course, understand it as well. For criminal law, I think the best is to memorize the first 20 uh, articles of the Revised Penal Code. And for persons and family law, I would recommend that you memorize the first 21 articles of the Civil Code. Okay, we have another multiple question query from Lester Felix. First question from Lester. For advanced reading, would you recommend buying textbooks already or wait until I enter law school and buy the recommended book by the professor? Well, in order to save money, and if you, uh, because you want to only want to buy the book once, then you only buy the book recommended by the professor. But if you have a chance, you can buy used law book. For constitutional law, I would recommend the book by Father Joaquin Bernas. For persons in the family law, I would recommend the book, the latest uh, the edition that you can buy from Dean Mel Santa Maria. And for the Vice Penal Code, I would recommend uh, a book written by um, uh, Supreme Court Justices, maybe Padilla, Herrera, or Regalado. Second question from Lester. What subjects do we need to master to have a good foundation in law school? Well, if you're talking about college, um, and you have a chance to enroll or subjects in your senior year, maybe as an elective, take up maybe logic or philosophy. But if you are in first year college and you are given a chance to choose electives, I would recommend maybe some English literature subjects if your major is not English literature. Those uh, courses give a good foundation and, and can prepare you for law school. Third question from Lester. What set of skills do we need to improve before entering law school? Well, um, I have a video up here on the essentials of law school and the three skills that you have to at least be familiar with are, are the elementary skills, reading, writing, and speaking. You need those three skills to enter law school. We have one question from uh, viewer Barulia Kishan. I hope I pronounced that right. The question is, is it too late for me to go to law school at the age of 30? Well, I entered law school at age 29. I was married with one son. So it's not too late to enter law school at 30. In my school at the University of Colocan City, we have a few senior students. We have students that are working that are in our 30s and our 40s. Of course, I don't discriminate. As long as they pass the entrance examination and the interview, I will accept them as law students. But um, there, it's never too late to enter law school, whether you are 30, 40, or even 50. Just know it's a five-year commitment and a bar exam to follow. We have one question here from viewer Mia Ayel Patriarca. hope I pronounced that right. She asks, I'm not really good at analytical skills and have low confidence in speaking in public. How can I survive this? Well, I have a video here on tips on how to survive law school, but uh, offhand or to answer this question specifically, if you're going to speak in public or, or maybe in the classroom, if it's to the professor, I would look right above his head, not looking at him directly or maybe at his forehead. That way you don't actually see his, <laughs> his face or his eyes when you are speaking. So it won't give you, a, it'll give you more confidence don't try to look at him directly but by looking at his forehead uh, it, it would appear that you're looking at the professor as far as speaking in public um, i would recommend that you focus on three people or three objects or on the left the center and the right of the audience and then as you speak just speak or talk to alternatively of those three people or three objects and then um, do not, do not try to look at uh, the people's faces as you speak. Our last question for today is from James Del Rosario. And he asks, Attorney, can I raise my hand if I know the relevant answer regarding the case? Well, professors have their own technique or style in recitations in law school. 
Uh, some may encourage questions, some do not. But if you're given a chance to answer or raise your hand, I would only raise my hand in giving the right answer or volunteer an answer if the professor first asks for it or if the professor is comfortable with that. I would suggest only do that maybe in the third or fourth week. You get the feel of the professor. Does he encourage uh, raising of hands or does he punish people who raise their hands? Um, so you, it, it's your call. Um, it's a danger. Uh, and you might dig a hole for yourself if you do that. But if you do raise your hand and you try to give me the right answer, I think it's more encouraging. The professor will want it. And the professor you will see that you want to learn and you that you are ready for the recitation. That's it for this uh, week's Q&A. Uh, if, if any of you have any other questions regarding law school or law professors or law subjects, uh, please put them in the comments and I will answer them in the next Q&A video. This is Dean Rod Vera saying, it's not what you know, it's what they don't know. Goodbye.